or wait, maybe I like should have introduced myself a little bit. <laughs> All right. Like, yeah. Uh, Why don't you start? Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just have a little chat before I was thinking. Oh. If that's oh. okay. Hang on. We'll before stop we. Are we recording? We are recording. We are. So now, so yeah, we're here with, uh, I've done a little interacting with Martin on uh, Discord here and there, and you're on there. Yep. Your handle is, uh, is it pronounced Sarment? Or how do you yep. say it? Sarment. It's so, actually just my name and the first letter of my last name, but okay. scrambled together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> so I see. It's, All right. <laughs> it's, yeah. okay. it's nothing more creative than that. All right. Well, nice. And so we had interacted a little bit and just talked about having a conversation to potentially throw out to randos yeah. of um, just him telling kind of his general story just broadly of what brought him to kind of the how he got associated with Paul Vanderclay, if that was through Jordan Peterson, and then kind of just your general background and experience with religion. Because yeah. I'm assuming... I'm assuming, like most people, you had some familiarity or contact with Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And then yeah, that yeah. somehow For led sure. into, For and sure. that led into Paul Vanderclay. Yeah. And that's probably because you're Christian or religious of some sense, some sort. Mm. And so you want to just tell us kind of how, whatever comes to mind of how that all happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I, I have, like I mentioned before, a conversion story before this. But uh, we can see if we get to that, uh, okay. uh, uh, depending on how the conversation is going. But sure. uh, no, uh, it's nothing so special, but I was kind of falling away, uh, actually. Um, I, I has, had been a Christian and uh, I had quite some ups and downs in life, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's maybe a little embarrassing to say, but like I, I was kind of uh, addicted to porn, I guess. Yeah, a little. So it was many things, but uh, I was maybe just bored, and I don't know. So, uh, but uh, after a while, I, I got. Uh, yeah, I've been sick, uh, as, as I said, for a long time, like I can say, like it's been 10 years mm -hmm. uh, without uh, being in the workforce. So it's been, uh, there's a psychological component, of course, to it. And uh, that's, my doctor says it's like only that, but mm -hmm. like um, I have very hurting my back as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh yeah but uh anyway but i i was kind of starting picking myself up together because i was feeling so bad anyway i was kind of crying to god like if you want like i want to follow you like i was having a lot of like uh, seizures actually almost i was down at the emergency like huh. feeling really sick uh, very very like thick. panic attacks. Yeah, I guess. And uh, yeah. it was just awful. I've like I I played a lot of like World of Warcraft too. <laughs> uh, in that period, that I was yeah. kind of falling away, and uh, like that was um, yeah. Like and I can backtrack even a little bit more. I've been actually to a Bible school before that again. But it was kind of okay. a little bad experience because um, uh, I it didn't click with me entirely. Like it's I was kind of really like newborn and I was like expecting to save the world or something like that. And it was many people that had grown up in Christian homes, and they it, it I just kind of got disillusioned a little bit like it wasn't what I expected yeah so I had a really bad reaction after that and that like was after I quit there that was the last time I had a job like before that yeah I can uh, tell maybe like yeah I've um, and I have I've been through like all the school system in Norway so I have like high school done 
and after that I did uh, like three years with on the university with like maths and physics uh, and I have uh, like a bachelor degrees in uh, like pure maths actually so like um, and I was thinking about doing a master's uh, but uh, uh, there's a lot of detail here but I'm like thinking what I can uh, what I can skip so if I may just ask some questions to get yeah. so that I understand the timeline better. Yeah. Um, you were, so were you raised in a Christian home? Like are your parents Christian? Yeah, my mom is Christian. Uh, she, uh, but my dad is not. So that has actually all been a conflict in my life mm -hmm. uh, and or family, like almost uh, my entire life. So this has created a lot of uh, conflicts, actually. So, um, so they don't. So there's not peace between your parents about their personal religious convictions. No, they, no, they, they actually kind of almost broke up, but yeah, uh, we're going to file a divorce. Like in, in Norway, you have like to petition and for a year before you finalize mm -hmm. the divorce. But they didn't pull it huh. through because. Uh, I guess because of the family situation and uh, because they we have uh, they bought an apartment for my sister also so they're like economically tied together I don't yeah. know but uh, uh, they're living at separate rooms so but we oh. live, yeah yeah so that's um, just a quick aside this is related I mean it's related but is that a standard thing in Norway that anyone who gets a divorce has a year like kind of uh, uh, I have no idea. I have never been married or anything right. like that. So, huh. well, I didn't know. That was just interesting. If that was like the common practice, yeah. that would be an interesting thing. So, well, yeah. so that's I have tough. A, I have a quick question. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Um, did, do you, um, as you were growing up, um, mm. was your mom? Did she regularly attend church, and did she take you with her? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she went. Uh, she like my. She, when I was about 10, she came to like uh, tele, tele evangelism and mm -hmm. on the radio started to get. And then she uh, heard one day like a guy that was starting a new um, church. And he said like, why don't you come visit? And then mm -hmm. she first came there and uh, that's actually the church we have stayed to until this day. Kind of. It's a very small Pentecostal church. Um, so yeah. you've been a part of that church, though, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, but, but like, again, they have, like, um, they have uh, very long meetings. So it was not so easy to take a 10-year-old child to, <laughs> like, it could actually maybe, maybe I'm exaggerating, but, like, it could be five hours tops wow. in like the oh, most wow. extreme just singing uh, and praying and yeah 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 uh but of course it's like it's kind of seasonal so if they have a lot of uh going on maybe it's maybe two hours today it's more like two two and a half maybe wow so is that a common what would you say is the what is the most common uh, Christian religious practice in Norway? Like, where does Pentecostalism fit into the broader Norway religious landscape? Uh, no, it's pretty big, I would say. Like, it's definitely there on the market of uh, churches, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think. But, uh, um, but, like, the Lutheran is, like, the state church. Okay. So that's like the, or we just call it the people's church. Mm. So it's kind of, that's where like, uh, and there's not so much debate actually about the church. Like it's 70% of Norway are a part of that church. Okay. So uh, they have kind of like, there's not so much theological debate around like, Lutheranism or this and that. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just like, this is what, uh, 
uh, our fathers uh, gave us, you know, like this yeah. is our heritage. So that's just how it is. Uh, right. So, so then if you were going to give, just so I get your time frame, I just mm. visualize it. If you had to put ages on when you were going to church with your mom, like what period was that? When did you kind of fall away? Mm. And then when did you have kind of a conversion and a going back to church? Like what were the ages? Yeah, I can start with like I'm 35 now. Yeah. So that, yeah. Uh, I forgot to say that in the beginning. Um, no, uh, I was uh, at church maybe with mom. She had like this push. I didn't attend regularly and it wasn't like there was no uh, children's group. So I never mm. kind of get got connected in a subcultural Christian uh group i have never had any christian friends and that's not so okay. normal to talk about actually in norway so um mm. uh, so i have a normal secular upbringing and like public schools is very normal in norway and uh, yeah i just did like every other kid did um i was at church maybe mom took me now and then when she felt i she she needed me to get there or mm. uh, maybe in the age between 10 and 14 i would say and okay. uh, then i fell away and i like i did like uh, normal kids in norway would do like uh, i played football or soccer i guess that you call it mm -hmm. and uh, i uh, Played there, yeah, of course, a lot of computer games. EverQuest was before World of Warcraft came. Mm -hmm. If you heard of that, I've heard of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, did you play or? I did not, but I, uh, I, heard, I had some friends who played for days at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was. I was more of a, I was more of a King's Quest kind of a guy. I remember okay. King's Quest. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of it. Okay, but the... oh, sorry, I'm hijacking. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go down the. No, 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 that's fine. No, all um, the old played... Sierra games. So then, so that was. <laughs> <laughs> so you went. So you were at church. You would say your your time at church, besides the broader Lutheran culture and yeah. this Pentecostal church with your mom, was ten to fourteen. Yeah. And then you were just doing kind of regular kid high school stuff, video games, yeah. soccer. Yeah. Um, and then. At some point, I'm guessing you had a, you mentioned a conversion experience. Yeah, because uh, I like I did um, I did uh, uh, right after uni I did the university like uh, I said in maths um, in yeah. pure maths actually so <laughs> kind of big deal for me I enjoyed that very much I got yeah. a lot of good friends there but uh, after about three three years i really wanted to break up and do something um new uh, see the world or we were joking like to find yourself or <laughs> you know find yourself in yeah. the traveling yeah so uh, uh because i realized like um taking a masters that we, then my life would be pretty much locked in uh then I would probably have to continue and apply for a job and then it would not be so easy to travel. And I kind of felt like this was my opportunity mm. to do something different. And um, I was actually jotting down, like I tried to have like my witness in uh, a Google document, like, so I have it all typed out and mm. it kind of reminded me, uh, sadly, a little about like the prodigal son in Luke 15. Mm. Like he brought, he, sure. he wanted his, his inheritance to, to see the world. Like I kind of felt a little convicted, like now just a week ago, I was jotting. <laughs> but anyway, mm. I went, I went with a friend. We earned money for half a year and then we went to Russia and took the Trans-Siberian rail route to through China 
and mm. down uh, there and down to the Laos, Cambodia and uh, Thailand. We're a three months uh, trip. Wow. Mm. Uh, and it was on this trip I kind of had a conversion experience. Interesting. Uh, um, so I actually kind of, I have written down kind of uh, everything here um, because um, uh, if I get like the document, maybe it's uh, a little easier to um, follow my thoughts. But do you have any questions so far? No. I'm just interested to hear how the conversion experience happened on that trip. But um, yeah. yeah, that's what's in my mind, right? Yeah. But I don't know, Jeff, if you have anything else before that. Yeah, I, I want to get to that as quick as we can. Just a point of clarification. Um, who were you on the trip with again? Was it people who yeah. you had been in church with or did that? Were they no, 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 that not not connected to church at all. Okay. Just so that, my friends like I gone to high school with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't have any Christian friends. Mm. I don't have any. I, 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 yeah. I'm. Uh, let's go on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and yeah. A part of the story also is like I had been thinking in that period where I was breaking up and were planning to go to the trip. I had been thinking a lot about Jesus and Christianity, um, uh, actually. And I, uh, I. Uh, let's find it where it says there. Yeah, I was almost entirely certain that Christianity was true, but I didn't really know. I'm reading now, but I didn't yeah. really know what I should use it for. I decided to be as open and truth-seeking as possible. At this, yeah, that was kind of I decided. While all this earning money took place, I decided to be as open as possible. At the same time. Uh, in the building next where I studied, they posted a lot of posters, like with invitation to a Christian student union. And they had like uh, this uh, commercial, especially for the science branch uh, of the Christian student union. So I felt like that was perfect for me. As, uh, a science branch, like people that were studying science could have a Christian Union student fellowship. So that was kind of perfect for me. I thought like, oh, this, I want to go there. But, uh, uh, I, but I thought for myself, I was not brave enough to go then, but I decided to wait a year. And it can take that long to get courage because I just felt like I, if I went there, I didn't know like what would happen if I got, uh, if I didn't have the right questions to ask, maybe I was so uncertain if I really wanted this to become a Christian, and mm -hmm. I kind of felt I had to wait to uh, <clears throat> to to get uh, my own uh, opinions on uh, the faith before I could. So I decided to wait. And after I had earned enough money, we went on a trip to Asia. Russia was the first country, and soon we got to China. Soon after the trip began, our fellowship increased. We met two from Sweden and two from Denmark. After about one month, my travel fellowship wanted to go to the south, to Southeast Asia for a more warm climate. But I didn't feel done with China and I wanted to travel a little longer in towards the border of Tibet, since that was not so far from where we currently was in Lijiang. Uh, yeah, and then I have here um, uh, a Jewish. I met a Jewish person. Uh, joined me further toward like the border of Tibet. I think I never really had spoken only with a Jewish person. I think today this meeting was from God. 
I'm just not sure what the meaning was. We arrived in Shangri-La and stayed there for some days before he moved back to the mainland China. I went even further to a city called Dechin, which was uh, 10,000 to 11,000 feet above sea level. There were only me and one other foreigner at the hotel. I was about to go to watch a glacier there and went from my hotel down a valley over a bridge over a river. I was just standing on the bridge looking at the water and the mountains. It was a thin river there and a big pointy mountains tops around me everywhere. I was kind of proud that I had taken this journey and followed my heart to go where I myself most wanted. It felt like some sort of pinnacle on my trip and my life so far. I had been saving and working for six, seven months and made new friends at work too. I had family and friends at home that I soon would meet again. I was, I was just where I wanted. Suddenly came a strong feeling over me uh, that it had to be God that created all this beautiful nature. Yeah, it might sound a little antithetical, but we have beautiful nature in Norway too. But I think it was an array of feelings and situations that converged on me. Also, the nature and the villages in China is a little more extreme than home. Since I was brought up slightly in the church, I knew how to receive Jesus. I think subconsciously, I understood it was the Holy Spirit that was knocking at my door. And I received Jesus in my heart right there and then. And I was filled with such a relief and joy. After this, I started to head south to meet others. No telephone works worked abroad at that time, so it took some time before I found them. I stopped drinking uh, much alcohol, just a little, but enjoyed the rest of the trip. When I came home to the churchyard, as I had planned to earn some money back again. Um, it says there my internet connection is unstable. It's, mm. Do you hear me still? Yeah, you're fine right yeah. now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. There I came to talk, talking about religion with some of the other employees. And I said I was a Christian. It became a little tense. Yeah. Uh, when school began again, I looked for the Christian Student Union, which I had seen posters of one year prior. I found them. This was very nice. The first meeting had dinners with Taco. I went there every week after this with fellowship, food, and Bible studies, and some prayer. I really enjoyed the social aspect, but I still felt I needed a stro even stronger relationship with God. I felt almost like an um, explosion on the inside. <laughs> mm. A little later in the fall, I met some people on a stand from a group uh, called New Generation. They invited me to an Alpha course. There I learned the basics within apologetics for Christian Christianity and had fellowship. We had a meal before every session. And after I was with them one time to the Philadelphia Church of Oslo, and I started to go to prayer meetings in the chapel in the University of Oslo. I met some more people after a while. I also joined in distribution of an easy language New Testament of campus, which was very, which had testimonies inside. Uh, yeah, and then I have some uh, images from like, I don't know, like, can I share the screen or something or? I should, think so. You should be able to. I mean, if you go down and click share. I can try. Yeah, do you see? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this was where I was on the glacier. Like this was a Buddhist country. So there was a lot of flags mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because they uh, they hang up like these flags. I, I think it was a lot of uh, Buddhist inscription on them or something. Uh, like on the way when I was going to the glacier and here is the glacier. And he's, here's some pictures from like, uh, I like this, I took picture exactly where I did the conversion. Mm. 
mm. or I like, or I felt like I was born again, or whatever you call it, or I felt yeah. something happened to me. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of it came to um, <coughs> like uh, like uh, everything. It kind of felt like everything was right in my life. Kind of like. I felt like at peace with everything and like then I just if my life has been this good and I'm so thankful to God for all this and it was kind of like me turning to Jesus more in a time of uh, a good time than in mm. a crisis uh, yeah. so that's like people have many different uh, ways they turn to Christ and this was like in the same village it was like crazy different uh, climates uh, variation it was like snow on the top and somebody had made a snowman mm. uh, yeah that was some books and because mom gave me like books and Uh, to read when I was young. Yeah. Yeah. And here it continues a little bit. Uh, or uh, I don't know. Do you have any interjections? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think it's interesting. I think you should just continue with whatever you want to say from your testimony. Yeah. Um, uh, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can screen share again, I guess. Uh, yeah, because I'm kind of adding to like the main testimony is over, but I'm kind of wanting to commentate. Yeah, the second to last person I met before I enjoy repented to Jesus was the Jewish person. He had served six years in the army in Israel. It was when we traveled to Shangri-La from Lijiang. He told a lot about Israel and that he loved this country. He could walk day trips across Israel and sleep under the open sky. He also said everybody knew everybody in Israel. Possibly his family came originally from the Netherlands with Aliyah. He loved to live in a kibbutz and he talked very warmly of his platonic love and respect for the female leader of the house. I don't really think he liked me that well, actually, uh, Lul, <laughs> because we were so different persons. He was very frank and I am more shy, but we were sitting on a bus together and couldn't easily separate for the next two, next mm -hmm. two three days. Mm -hmm. In afterthought, I thought he was just like Nathaniel in the Bible, very frank and straight but honest and a good person I learned a lot from. And then I have mm. like the verses from the Bible here, like uh, I can read them as well, I guess. Philip, yeah. like Andrew and Peter was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, Philip said. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. So that's mm. very nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> the reason I wrote write about the Jewish person I met is because he made an impression on me in one way or another. I think it has a spiritual meaning. Maybe it was a sign from God to send me one of his own people just before I repented. Maybe it was the father himself that reached out his hand to me with a sign to send a non-believing Jewish person to get me to think about God's people and their story with God. And it also encouraged me that he was so full of love for it country, his country. God showed me he cares for his own people and he gave them a good home. They are special to God since they are his people chosen and loved by him. 
Yeah, and this is the Jewish person. Uh, my friend in Norwich and the girl worked on, in the hostel. It's kind of upside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should have converted the pictures. It works. Yeah, and there is his, this guy. <laughs> yeah, and it's soon finished now, just this uh, paragraph. Oh. The image below, so there's some more images below. The images below is from the place I visited when I went to Cambodia. Yeah, because I continued after I um, left China and after I repented, I kind of, uh, uh, yeah. I wanted and I found eventually uh, somebody was looking for help for a secular orphan home. So then I think, oh, maybe I can go there and see if I can help. Uh, maybe a silly or like naive uh, thought, but yeah. In 2008, it was a person from Singapore which received from God he should go there to start a church. He had taken in three young boys and one of my age. They were orphans, I think. He also learned them some English. He was better in English than the teachers in the schools in the neighborhood. He had some mango trees, which he got some food and earned some money from. At that time, I was strongly in my newfound faith, but not grounded in the word of God. This is actually a point for, I believe, my falling away. Mm. Because I was strong in faith, but I, I actually had like what I believe was a prophetic uh, word that he said like uh, when I was at a meeting uh, and he said like somebody is like if you don't get grounded in the word of God you then you can uh, that's very important I don't remember we had mm -hmm. a small prayer meeting before I continued my journey I was there about five days I had actually found them by an accident, I was looking for a non-religious orphan center, which I saw on a poster in Laos. But when I came to the bus stop there and asked for direction, a person drove me to this church instead. So I think God's hand was in this too. This church was called Revival Church. So that was the guy from <laughs> Singapore. So, and this was the youngest boy. And uh, two other boys <laughs> that were... Yeah, and there was some girls coming there because he was, like I said, very better in English than like the local school. So they came, he had like a little house and there's me like trying to teach English <laughs> mm. very bad. <laughs> uh, and there's one of the girls that came, like they came with their homework and I don't know, like he just, there's one of the boys that were living there. There's the people there, they playing football or something. And I think that little in the mi middle there, maybe they had like a monkey on a leash there. So <laughs> I don't know why that. Yeah, this is like the city where all the like the guys, they were like unemployed or something. They were watching television during the daytime. And this was like the local, like a private school, I think. That was in the Cambodia. I don't remember anymore. The yeah, and there is me leaving. I take took a picture, kind of. You see, like in there, he called he. It was his house. He called it Revival Church. So you see, up in the left corner, it says like Revival Church. So mm -hmm. he was kind of. And there are me and the boys at last. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's uh. Uh, so, um, and there's the bicycle I went to town with to like buy water and stuff. Yeah, and this paragraph is the last. Yeah. Okay. It is actually more to the story. Afterwards, much later, I got to know there was some African woman in my mother's congregation. We said just started up a regular Friday all night's prayer. They had prayed especially for me, precisely in the period I got born again. So that is the real explanation to the story. Nothing mm. happens without prayer. Mm. So that's like the conclusion to my testimony. Oh, uh, nice. 
that's that's pretty much the old testimony like it is some in the beginning i skipped over but i can post it uh, in the a link yeah it, if we under the text of the youtube video or something yeah that would be great yeah. so then um one of the questions that i had is so that you um so 10 to 14 you were at church with your mom and then you fell away for a while went to college did your maths and then you went on this trip with some high school friends through russia and all the way down to southeast asia and then into china and up by here where you had the conversion experience but then within your testimony you said there was a point where you weren't you you had this newfound zeal and newfound faith after this conversion experience but then you fell away again right because you weren't grounded yeah. in the word yeah so then there must have been another another falling away and then somehow a coming back through jordan peterson and paul something. yeah like uh, i wouldn't actually call it falling away like when i was like between 14 and 22 mm. uh yeah. which was kind of i think it was 22 or 23 maybe there i got this born again experience but of course i wasn't living a sin free life but uh, i kind of never had uh, at that point i hadn't uh, i need some water yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> at that point i hadn't like decided to be a christian like consciously so i um So I wouldn't call that falling away, but like after I yeah. did the born again, I experienced, I, I was at its alpha course, like I said, and uh, I was like searching actively out Christian people uh, to like, I was kind of like set my mind on like, no, I want to be a Christian mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. I've been waiting all my life to become a Christian. Now is the time. And, um, okay. but it was then I went to the Bible school, like uh, one year maybe after I came home uh, from the trip. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like, uh, that was such a bad experience. So that was kind of dramatic in my life. Uh, that's actually a long story in itself. Mm. But, uh, uh, I kind of kept the faith. I tried to like, tried some fasting actually. And like, I really was fighting. Like I didn't have a job, anything. So like I was going through the streets of Oslo just like to get my mind of all like temptations or like, I didn't know what, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy actually. But, um, uh, uh, and I had like a little period I actually got kind of kicked out from home actually and it was uh, a long story and I like kept that going like um, because like I think like porn has been like the biggest battle in my life actually mm. I think that's kind of it's like uh, alcoholics like you when when you are so so deep in you kind of like you're never gonna recover entirely mm. Um, so I was kind of just bored and after a while I was like really fighting like I kept it like for three years maybe I don't know exactly like where I didn't watch any porn I didn't masturbate anything mm -hmm. and then my grandmother died and I actually we had like we went there she lived an hour away so me and mom and I actually kind of have a quite good relationship with mom nowadays, but then also then. But we have had some um, conflict, but uh, we kind of fine now. Yeah. And uh, but she died, and I stayed at her house uh, a year before we got to sell it. Uh, and uh, then I was just staying there and I was kind of bored and I started to play yeah. World of Warcraft again that I hadn't played since I was like 20 before my first born again. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then 
I uh, I was kind of bored, so I just guess I started. Uh, yeah, and then and then it's continued. Uh, from there, it kind of stabilized my life a little bit. After a while, we sell the house. I came home. I started to play some more World of Warcraft again since I quit kind of World of Warcraft also when I got born again. I don't know if actually it's a sin, mm. but I kind of, uh, I didn't have time for it anyway because yeah. I was going some to church and I, I was studying something in that uh, period and uh, or maybe uh, I wasn't actually uh, in a short period after uh, yeah but anyway it was kind of I do it was in this period I had like all these panic attacks like I was playing very late one night I was playing th through the night like I hadn't uh, uh, a normal uh, cycle, day cycle mm. for sleeping, and uh, so I was playing all night, and I was uh, like not drinking alcohol because like that's never like I've never been addicted to that, but I was drinking like a lot of Pepsi Max mm. and just candy. But I was kind of over the computer all night, and I was just having like I felt after I was doing something. Really, I wanted to do like uh, a challenge, or it was not the ride, but it was like a single player uh, thing in World of Warcraft uh, challenge that I wanted to get like achievement. Mm. Uh, those that have played World of Warcraft, like uh, uh, maybe no. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and I got like started to get short of breath. I was like, I felt I couldn't breathe, and I was. Uh, just like kind of panicking I went out to the emergency and I just felt like my chest beating and it was terrible and I was actually like after that I was bedridden for three months wow and then I kind of uh, started playing something again actually when I was feeling a little better but then I had another like almost like a seizure or like total panic or I was like daily many hours a whole week every day of a week down at the emergency in Oslo huh. and then I was just lying in bed for many months a half a year after that or maybe more and um, I was just so sick and they didn't know what was wrong and uh, like the doctors and my like uh, uh, doctor, like everybody in Norway has like their personal doctor, like uh, you really can't like, um, you can choose, but you have like one that is assigned automatically to you. And he's kind of just like, no, it's nothing. And just like, I, that just made me more freaked out. And this is a long story too, but, uh, I was just feeling worse and worse and worse and uh, it was kind of then I was just like Jesus Jesus like I want to follow you but I kind of at the same time felt like this isn't working like I can't figure out how with my um, sin and like uh, like uh, everything and and this was kind of when I was starting to climb a little bit out like um uh, out of that and um, I got some short uh, like uh, jobs to like working in a kitchen through like we have a very big uh, public uh, uh, like like they help it's called NAV like in Arbeidsvermittlings it's like uh, work uh, they try to distribute uh, unemployed workers to get education or training or like to get uh, uh, like free uh, hiring from uh, employers like they don't pay but like the state yeah. pays and you are free labor mm. and I was getting like more help uh, but um, uh yeah so i started anyway to 
uh, I watched a video one day uh, about like uh, actually like uh, it's been a passion uh, now. Like I watched a video like uh, like Jew is like a, a curse words in many schools among many children in Norway today. It was like a documentary about that. So I was really like interested like uh, in this and so that kind of stepped up my commitment to like uh, I got like we have a lot of groups that are kind of speaking for Israel and uh, I know that is not the same like necessarily but uh, like in but uh, in many cases uh, anti-Semitism, like anti-Zionism is actually in many cases uh, the same as anti-Semitism in my opinion, but uh, like that's, and I, they have like they're translating a lot of, that's at least my opinion, uh, because I read very much about it and they are like, I read, uh, never mind, but uh, they, they, are translating a lot of books like every half year uh, translating books that are relevant for like defending Israel and like I get a lot of perspectives like uh, like Palestinian media watch have like uh, like uh, they are uh, like checking out like what's actually it was a peace process in 2010 and they're like checking out like and have a book full of quotes like what's actually the Palestinian population are being informed about in their national television and in their newspaper and they were like publishing everything in a book and uh, there was one book about like uh, like the Grand Mufti uh, Al Hamin Al Husseini is like the Grand Mufti like the chief uh, Muslim leader during the time like he had a meeting with uh, Hitler and was trying to mm. um, at least uh, yeah it's like a German uh, uh, a German uh, uh, writer that actually wrote about uh, a book about this like uh, a scholar not a, uh, not um uh yeah halb mund on talking cross like half moon and haken cross das dritten reis the araber und palestina klaus mikkel malman und martin coopers so like there we have like a very small jewish community in norway like i think it's like 2000 they say uh jews in norway mm. so like it's but we actually, so it's like, like I wrote in my testimony, like I, I actually never knowingly, like consciously met a, a Jewish person. So uh, they, like the, the Jewish community is like really, like I'm, I'm like, they are very fighting very strong for like they, their right to be Norwegians and Jewish and they also kind of fighting at least for like the I think there are they want a more balanced view about Israel and you know this is also more complicated because uh, Norway has like the peace process like the Oslo Accord so this complicates everything because Norway kind of wants to have the political correct opinions. They want to be a neutral observer and like, but this just doesn't help the situation uh, very much that we want to be this perfect, uh, uh, have this perfect picture on uh, and I guess like uh, we are a Lutheran country that maybe like he gets to blame a lot for his anti-Jewish sentiments like I don't know how this plays in like mm. the church it, we don't usually like 
uh, say like uh, talk very much about or I have to think about like how much that is actually affecting the situation but uh, anyway um, uh, yeah and after that I got like uh, I felt like I had to contribute also so I tried to read a lot and actually just being a social activist warrior on Facebook. Like I tried to talk with people on Facebook about Israel. <laughs> and that is uh, very funny sometimes and just <laughs> very, yeah. So you were, a, you were like a social justice warrior, but for like being pro-Israel. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I can, like I mentioned in the Discord actually like, uh, like I don't know that I actually had some uh, Nazi participation in my family also, like back mm. in some side of the family. So I kind of feel like responsible also. Mm. Like sure. I I must be on the right side, uh, or at least in this uh, the right side of history. <laughs> this yeah. uh, Ben Shapiro usually jokes about <laughs> jokes about that, but uh, no, I guess it's fine to be on the right side of history everybody's so trying sure. to be i think it's just yeah yeah that's the problem everybody thinks they are yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah but i can try to wrap this up uh i started to debate a little more and then i started to debate a little more on the christian norwegian uh like uh like what you call like this debate forum like more like uh, where you can people post uh, like uh, pieces and then you can comment mm. uh, like on a on like a Christian blogs? no it was uh, the, a Norwegian Christian newspaper that uh, ha is their official uh, mm. debate uh, site okay but well, uh, but uh, and then I kind of like then there's a lot of Christians, so then I kind of get to talk about Christianity also. Uh, and yeah, and then when I got to talk about Christianity, then when you are debating Christianity, you eventually, it was just at the time where like uh, maybe half a year, year after Jordan Peterson had released his uh, Bible series. Yeah. And then uh, I, after a while, I watched some of his debates. I think the first I watched was like the monk debates where he mm -hmm. and Stephen Fry were discussing like free speech. Mm -hmm. And eventually I got to the Bible series and I was very, very impressed by him. And like, I think it was actually the YouTube algorithm that got me to Peter, Naipaul Van de Clay. Yeah. And I really liked, like, I got kind of, I felt like, <clears throat> peace because he was like he had so much knowledge and he kind of could filter through some of what Jordan Peterson said so it was more yeah. um, digestible for me uh, yeah. and my uh, view and then I think I actually watched him for a year maybe or maybe that's too much mm -hmm. before I uh, and I didn't write anything on his YouTube page but uh, it, I kind of like felt at rest to listen to him. And then after a while, I really wanted to join the Discord, but mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of scared. And then I finally managed like you to, that I wanted to join. And yeah. then I joined and then uh, I didn't uh, write very much. Like that's maybe just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I can say maybe I got the best connection like with Peter from Iceland and like mm -hmm. uh, Iron Root from the yeah. Netherlands. Like they yeah. have talked uh, a bit about with me on the on the voice, on the voice chat. chat. Yeah. So they are maybe yeah. those I get most uh, connection to. And, yeah, they're good, uh, good guys, and they're. Yeah. they're a lot uh so so that's yeah that's interesting it, it's kind of um it's an interesting just as a quick aside it's interesting to me 
I'd be interested to know what was common to everyone that YouTube's, like what did YouTube's algorithm pick up on that, that linked up Paul's video to all these people that were interested in Jordan Peterson? Because it's something, there's something about people who have, I don't know, they must, they must watch videos that have to do with some aspect of Christianity or they must have Christian search, param, you know, um, just certain keywords in their searching things or in their videos and then somehow associated that with Peterson. And then they just pop up a pastor comments on Jordan Peterson. Yeah. So that was the, Paul's big one that blew up. And I think yeah. Paul is kind of like you said, Paul is almost a, and I mean, we, we use this in these communities in a negative way, but Paul was almost a safe space for people with a certain Christian background mm. um, to try to discern why am I so attracted to this Jordan Peterson guy? Yeah. Um, uh, what I was thinking, I, like I haven't read up on this, so this is just speculation, but uh, I was thinking like uh, YouTube just basically uh, when a lot of people watch Jordan Peterson, uh, and if a lot of those people are watching uh, another video, like then YouTube recommends, like they put me in that category and then they give me like the recommendation for the other videos that yeah. a lot of people watch that also are interested and have actually uh, watched in their history of in YouTube, like they have watched you Peterson and like the, it's just like a Venn diagram or something like yeah. they yeah, like yeah. They, and then they're just pushing along me uh like recommending to me what uh, the other people that are kind of similar in like in my group that i have been identified by the like mm -hmm. the artificial intelligence i guess <laughs> somehow yeah. like they put the label on me like i'm this kind of guy yeah. that uh, likes uh, conservative or whatever or yeah then they recommend that's what i'm sure that happens. happens it's like crowdsourcing yeah. video recommendations or something based yeah. on similarities but so then um i guess i'm curious i mean that's how you got to paul and some of your background and testimony so then where would you say where are you at right now in regard to your faith and practice and yeah so uh mm uh where i'm at right now is uh, i still have in contact with like this um church that i was in since i was 10 years old yeah but, um but i um i think it's uh, i get back pain so i don't usually go like on the sunday but sometimes like they have uh, uh prayer uh, and social gathering like we sit at the table with coffee like on thursdays and wednesdays mm -hmm. like i sometimes go there like i check by uh, like um, yeah i'm not so mobile i stay a lot at home uh, sadly so mm. so i try like to practice uh, christianity the best i can uh, by i try to read the bible i have a daily devotion commentary on a small uh, portion at least Mm -hmm. I try to pray uh, like a Pentecostal, like uh, I just try to pray in tongues. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of embarrassing. Like uh, people say maybe it's just like not real, but like, like I, uh, I was see Job, he talks about like, how do you pray? It was, I think, or maybe somebody else like, or a lot of people have problems like with how they pray. If sure. you are a Pentecostal, you just think about the issue or about something you're thankful for. And then you say, just like, Pura, Saka, Buya, Para, Tarali, Kaya, Baya, Ba. And then, yeah. <laughs> then you bypass the entire problem. <laughs> yeah. Of, uh, it's just. <laughs> no, I know. I, I, uh, I didn't. Most of my. Um, most of my adult christian church life apart from my new 
foray into orthodoxy was in churches that weren't, I don't know. I mean, this is where he gets into all the labels. They wouldn't have described themselves as like hardcore Pentecostals because that's kind of mm-hmm. Pentecostalism is, it's probably like a, for the gifts of the spirit, there's probably a spectrum and yeah. you put Pentecostalism over here and they, they called themselves at the time. I mean, this is all labels, right? But they called themselves um, charismatic, which now they call themselves continuationists. So like they believe mm. the gifts of the spirit continue. Yeah. That's the mm. label they put on it. But, but I think they, they try to differentiate themselves from Pentecostals because then you have like the Benny Hinn televangelist yeah. that's being slain in the spirit and yeah, yeah. visions of, you know. No, so th- so the, he is popular in Norway or like among this group that are like committed pentecostalism like yeah. i think it's uh when you first are a pentecostal in norway then you have you don't are not so picky i guess because <laughs> uh um when you're a big minority you can't be super picky yeah so it's like joe joe Osteen is popular benny hinn uh like all god tv First now, what what she called that female that uh, is oh Joyce Meyer it. yeah Joyce Meyer yeah she's yeah. very popular all those uh, prosperity gospel yeah yeah like type but, people uh, <laughs> so uh, so or it has come to a backlash kinda mm. in uh, in the recent years uh, because we also have. Uh, uh, a very big uh, Pentecostal uh, group actually in Norway that uh, we have uh, a lot of Norwegian uh, tele evangelists in Norway mm-hmm. and they are actually quite like big they like they it goes I don't know how much money but like they're actually quite big and they have a station that the, a lot of people actually watch and they are really like they do stuff they was in like uh, the feast of the tabernacles they was down in israel and they put up uh, cameras and they actually was them that sold um the videos the video production to god tv so they are we have quite like um uh, uh, looking for the right word like they are um, they are very committed Mm-hmm. like not super big community but like the there are some pentecostalism or whatever you call them like mm-hmm. uh, and uh, this uh, the so like the people of norway like there's definitely like christians here like i said uh, like we have a bible belt but um, so like if you look the right places uh mm. Like uh, I told you before, you definitely find like Christian festivals and people talk about uh, on pockets on the internet. Yeah. People talk about Christianity, but like in the mainstream media, it's not talked about other than in a critical way. So, in like mm-hmm. mo- I, like I'm not entirely sure, but I would say that we are very secular. Yeah, like Christianity is not uh, respect. I imagine it is more respected in America, but I'm not sure. I uh, like the Washington Post or like Times, New York Times. They don't talk so positively about the Christian faith either. Yeah. I guess, but uh, so maybe that's just a global thing that Christianity well, just, in the West. Yeah, there's just pockets. I think America is different in that it. Um... I think largely it's very similar to a lot of Europe in that it's post-Christian, but because of, I don't know, because America kind of has this weird social divide because, and probably a lot of it has to do with our tie to politics that stems back to like the eighties is that Christianity got a lot of, still has a lot of political, although that's waning. Um, Mm. But it depends on how much you associate that with Trump and that whole phenomenon. Yeah. But um, there still is a strong, at least, uh, at least professional, uh, you know, like ideological Christian presence in America. But it's 
I don't know. It's interesting. And like even Pentecostalism, there's a, I remember I have a, as, as with most branches of Christianity, I have a love hate relationship with it. Cause I remember there was a, um, do you remember, uh, what's his name? John Oliver. He used to be yeah. on the daily I think, show. Yeah. I think maybe. I but he that. had a what's he, he a, a Brit- British or something or not? British, yeah. yeah. But he has a. I'll maybe send it to you on Discord or something. He had a. Mm. He had a. He's a. He's got an HBO show now. It's like an hour long HBO show, and he did one. And he just focuses on kind of like one major topic for the whole show, and so mm. it's kind of like that news comedy thing, like the Daily Show was. Yeah. And uh, he did one on televangelists, which was rough. Yeah, you know, just basically how they, how some of them have just really fleeced people, and it's kind of like this big scheme just to make money, and they're flying jets, you know, like Creflo Dollar and those types yeah. of guys. Um, so there, there is that aspect within Pentecostalism, but then, God, man, alive, it's hard. Like a lot of the lay Pentecostals, and even probably preachers and teachers, there's a, there is a just like a no nonsense zeal and passion and hunger for God that is it's pretty unparalleled in a lot yeah. of Christian I mean at least in a certain that aspect of that tradition is um beautiful I think in a lot of ways mm. and so I mean I understand its appeal especially in a culture that is that has kind of the in Jordan Peterson language, almost like the decaying carcass, the decaying whale of Christianity left of kind of like the Lutheranism that's maybe there, mm. which is mm. like still kind of in a Tom Holland way is still allowing for a lot of this kind of unacknowledged Christian faith to play out in the culture. Cause a lot of these people mm. are still acting Christianly, mm. although they don't use the language and they don't think of themselves that way. But mm. Pentecostalism, I think, is a desire to seek to, to Jordan Peterson to revivify the dead father. You know, yeah, like that's I think a lot of a positive way to view it. Um, so I don't know. That's tough. I mean, you're. It's hard. It's always sad for me to hear of. I mean, your physical limitation of getting to church is tough because mm. that the community aspect is just. I guess, and we're yeah. all somewhat isolated now because of coronavirus. Yeah. Um, but that's something that really, have you tried, so have you tried physical stuff? I had a buddy who was always just like lower back pain. He's like, do deadlifts. Yeah. No, no. So I joined Joey's uh, kind of like. Oh yeah. The, the fitness. Ta- yeah. The Tara Strong. So I yeah, yeah. bought myself like, uh, so I've been doing them regularly. I did like the level one they set like on the tar oh, strong uh-huh. today today actually oh nice so, so i do it uh I tr- it actually helps a little i feel like a little stronger maybe no i uh, when i walk um like i feel like my body is more uh standing uh, like uh, upright <laughs> because yeah. of uh, because of the training yeah. So, but I try not like to overdo it, so I get right. disencouraged. And no, things. absolutely. So I tried like to implement like piece by piece. No, and I think that's, that's a good idea. It, yeah. It's hard. Yeah, you don't want to hurt yourself. Like yeah. I've even realized that with age, because I like to go for runs, and I can be kind of a meathead. I'm a little like Joe Rogan, yeah. where I can go yeah. for a run, and then if I'm just my body's yeah. hurting, I'm just like. I remember when I grew up, I used to do sports and I used to wrestle, um, mm. like do wrestling and in our mm. weight room or in my high school, it used to say like on the wall, it had written something like pain, pain is just weakness leaving the body. Yeah. And so like, and so that is like, that's that kind of thinking is just ingrained in me. And so now I have to fight against that. I don't know if you can hear that. Sorry. It's the other piece. Yeah. But, um, so I still have that kind of spirit in me but i have to tell myself like don't be an idiot you're gonna hurt yourself and then you're not gonna so i think it's smart to take it slow but that really is i have found in my own personal life that disciplining my body has has really led to 
mental and psychological and spiritual discipline. Yeah. Like I think it's Aristotle or something like uh, discipline is freedom or something. Yeah. Uh, or uh, maybe I'm quoting wrong. Well, I mean, I think that general truth has been a lot of places, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think that's a, that's a good, no, but that's uh, great. But uh, I'm just, how old are you actually? 37. Okay. So we, pretty much the same but you are pretty a family close. father you're a pre- family father yep I, so i've been married 15 years got three yeah. kids wow um so we are yeah we're in the kind of middle of it my wife and i for the modern world um it's almost because of our going to church i think that it happened and being christian we talk about that a lot because a lot of our friends um for whatever reason either kind of what what Paul talks about like the the um the troubled generational hand handoff or handshake that he talks about the difficulty people mm. have meeting each other nowadays yeah okay for whatever reason i think it was probably due to church like my wife and i were both in in christian um organizations in college we met at college um mm. we both knew we were christians i mean i have my own story I haven't gone into like really depth in any of these talks of testimony stuff in this regard, but, Mm. um, but so there's a lot with that, but we were both Christians. And so we got married and then going to church all the time. And so right after college, we were married and we had kids pretty soon because we were just like, yeah, you know, why not? And it's kind of like Psalm, you know, the quiver, quiver full. There's a mm. verse in the Proverbs of like children, blessed if you if you have your quiver, a quiver full yeah. of them, you know. Okay, and where the where does that say in the what do you say? I I believe it's in the Psalm or the Proverb. I'm not sure okay. Proverbs. I'm not sure what verse it is, but um, and so it was kind of just that philosophy, which I think is true. Children are a blessing, you know. However, you want to, they're also a trial, which mm. is kind of the blessing, which is kind mm. of what marriage is. It's kind of what yeah. you know, there's. And so we got, we had kids pretty young, you know, like yeah. we, we were probably only married. Um, I don't know, like less than two years before we had kids. Yeah. And so, so all, but, all our friends are like have newborns and very young children now. Yeah. And we have older kids. Yeah. So it's kind of a, it's weird. that must be, that must be nice because like, uh, I try to like you. What's your oldest? How old is your oldest kid? Twelve. Oh well, yeah. Then you start to get like uh, companions. Uh, well, it's different. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's more. Yeah, it's more. It, there's definitely a transition that begins to happen, and the relationship evolves. Um, mm. I think, and it has to. And so it's interesting. And like, I'm very. I mean, obviously, on the Discord and watching Jordan, I'm very interested in ideas, as are probably most of us in this mm. community. Yeah. And so as your kids get older, they're more capable of that kind of stuff, you know? Mm. Um, so it's no. nice. It's just, it's all different. It's all a challenge, you know, but it's all, yeah. it's all good too. No, but uh, I, I guess at least I want to sum up. Uh, yeah, go I ahead. I don't know if we go. Oh, go. Yeah. Um, I want to at least like, I'm very thankful to Paul. Yeah. Uh, and I want to like end it on him because uh, he, uh, like Jordan Peterson, is like the super intelligent, like uh, of course uh, person. But uh, Paul is like been steady going, and like me not having a lot to do and uh, back pains or whatever troubles me, and he he just sticks out videos and keep them just interesting enough that i keep going one more step one more day yeah one more uh, and he's just calm and collected yeah of course like he meets everybody he interviews he meets them with respect like yeah. sam uh, was a unitarian and it, like he's totally not confronting and just respecting and uh, he's just like um, i don't know like actually how his life has been how have he reached this level that he can act in such a manner 
towards all people that kind of mm. amazes me like that's making me want to become like he is like yeah um, no, so beautiful. i feel like he really setting a high standard to <laughs> to follow and um no um uh, it would be really cool to interact more with the ideas like i said before like calvinism like he's like that's totally unknown to me mm. like i never almost i no, there was a guy that was John Calvin, and mm -hmm. but uh, uh, to me, um, like I actually have, I think a lot of questions, and uh, I think I want to explore at just there because, like, I watched Mary's video, Mary Cocken, you know, mm -hmm. also, and she was uh, in a period Lutheran, I think, uh, before she became Catholic. Mm. And she said, like, the Lutherans were, like, bashing on uh, the Calvinists, uh, actually. Yeah. Much much more than, like, they were much more friendly towards uh, the Catholics than to the Calvinists, even though both identify as Protestants. So yeah. she found that kind of... So I think maybe it's a little bit different in Norway because, like, we don't uh, need to be so tied up to propositionalism because yeah. it's kind of state funded like whatever they do they get the payment they like it's much more like this is just church work we do for the people we bury yeah. we marry people like i think it's slightly different but still i think people read a lot of luther i like i feel like like his kind of met mentality is like the baseline mm. uh so I feel it's not so much like um, uh, like his like sola scriptura or uh, sola fide or sola gratia or like any propositions he came with, but he kind of came with a style like uh, an a hermeneutics. Like he has very interest in Genesis. I know he made commentaries on the Psalms. Yeah, uh, like the Galatians is like one of his favorite books, uh, and the Romans and Hebrews, I think. Yeah. So I, I kind of I read like when I was young and I wasn't in church. Like, you st I still read. Uh, like, uh, I was kind of spying. Like, I wanted to see what the Christians wrote about. Like, I still still think it permeates the Christian community. Like Galatians, we hear about it all the time. Like, uh, it's a very important book. That mm. kind of illustrates or kind of is the mark on his whole theology almost. And uh, also, um, uh, he was a very man that was singing, like he has uh, was gathering people to sing a lot, like uh, he has written a psalm, like, like, God, you are such a strong fortress, I think, mm -hmm. uh, that we have in the church. And yeah. so I, I think it's not so much he came with a, a, like a, a proposition or he came with proposition also, but it's more like he came with the whole package that has affected yeah. the, the Norwegian community, uh, I think, uh, to a large part. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it, probably. And Luth, I, I mean... Luther was still, you know, I mean, he was still very Catholic, you know, yeah. I mean, he, he was the beginning of this whole Protestant thing. And so, of course, he mm. still had a lot of, he still had a lot of, I think, just those native, because I mean, Catholicism has a lot of beautiful things to it. So a lot of mm. those liturgical embodied rhythm, kind of like you said, total package things mm. that maybe some of Protestantism has lost were still present in Luther. And so he was just, he was the beginning of that whole phenomenon. But, um, mm. well, I agree. So, yeah, I agree. Paul is, to end it on Paul, he's a, a beautiful, the way that I've said it a lot is I think Paul is a really beautiful combination of uh, both masculine and feminine ways of communicating. Mm. He's very good at, at studying and and knowledge and searching these things out and narrowing and figuring things out and talking about ideas but yet also even in his dialogues in his conversations with people he's bit like you were saying he's very open and he's mm. very he's very yeah. non-judgmental and he's very he very much creates a space for people to speak 
what they really think. I mean, even your, even your Nathaniel quote mm. in your testimony, like mm. Jesus, I've always heard that verse. Well, I've heard different ways of people talking about that verse that like Jesus was being sarcastic when he said that, oh, here is someone without guile or here is someone without deceit. Mm. But, but Jesus, I think also could have very earnestly been like somebody who just says what they really think. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, fine. Doesn't mean I agree with you, but, yeah. <laughs> but you know, and we can talk yeah, about a... that. And I think yeah. Paul, I think Paul really allows a space for people to do that because that's something personally, that's my opinion on why so many people are drawn to Paul is that I think he is a lot, he's created, he has created an opportunity for people to say what I think they've been wanting to say, but haven't been able to find opportunity to say. Yeah. Like uh, I was thinking I wanted uh, also a conversation with Paul, but I was like, no, I feel like I, I really wanted uh, to to like uh, go around because I feel like he has enough on his schedule and he would love. So I'm very thankful for you to yeah. be here and take, I know you have a lot of going for your own and now I'm kind of like taking your time to, to, to push my like, uh, side of the story so I, I i don't think i put out any agenda other than my story today but uh, i'm very thankful that you like you and jeff and all like the pillars like you like you're really helping out us us uh love uh, people <laughs> <laughs> well he's i love talking to people and so does jeff it's, yeah. yeah it's just a matter of finding time and you know i mean yeah it's because I was, uh, silver uh, lining with COVID, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So I, I totally respect that. You, I think you're just uh, like smashing it with all your uh, interviews you've done lately, like or dialogues, like with Trip. And you're hitting a lot of, I uh, like, I have a lot of actually questions, or maybe I took, uh, tried to take some notes on like, just that video that uh, I kind of um, maybe wonder about i can i don't awesome. do you have time do you have time we can take an hour we can take it another time well maybe. let's well maybe let's we'll try to figure out another time to do it i don't want to yeah. i don't want to annoy my wife by being on the yeah. too long. but um we i would love because that's people whenever people i encourage people if someone watches this or you like just making yeah. comments in the videos yeah. or on yeah. the discord or whatever because i think that i really do think this is how language should work is that people put out ideas and other people come in with their ideas and then we yeah because nobody really knows like even my idea if the videos you were watching recently if it's technological babble like that mm. idea like i was telling michael has been something that has been rattling around in my brain which i think also like the, the similar idea that i'm learning to articulate he's been mm. thinking about for a long time yeah and so like as we learn to articulate this and work at it together and this is what happens in the whole like intellectual dark web yeah. what paul vanderclay is doing when he works through videos yeah working these things out out loud so if you have no, thoughts but, i'd love to hear them yeah, yeah but i i probably gonna put them in discord i think so that i can like get them a little away from uh, or maybe i i think about it but yeah, i definitely have but uh, like a part of it is also we have to be able to formulate and that's not so easy for me to like, it's easier maybe to talk with uh, you and um, yeah. like I wanted to, um, I wanted to have maybe a talk like with uh, Peter also or uh, Iron Root because like yeah. they were kind of like the first I met. So I kind of consider them, I wanted to have a talk with them, but like, I think they are, maybe peter is interested uh, but uh, i think i like iron root is not so interested in christianity actually i think he's well, more he's... like into into like uh, john verveke or uh, or even brett weinstein and all that huh. sam, sam harris maybe i don't know he, that he, about he, iron he root. Definitely, yeah mm. you guys should you should just have yeah. a video with like you and peter and iron root if he wants to yeah. and I'm sure Jeff would love to make a killer thumbnail yeah. <laughs> and throw it up on the Randos channel. Yeah. 
No, he, he is uh, very intelligent and uh, iron roots, that is. And he has yeah. a lot of comments, but he just hasn't grown up in a Christian background. So he doesn't have the right. the, the words and that's the language. What's so, that's what's so funny about this. Because like, I haven't spoken iron root probably as much as you have. Yeah. But I've spoken to him a little in voice chats and things, mm. or even like, and and it's so I don't know. This is this is probably why people some people find me annoying. But I talk to someone like Iron Root, and and I'm just like, I don't. I think we believe the same thing. I just use yeah. different words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean. It's just, yeah. it, it, and I don't know what that is. Maybe that's just me, like finding. I, t I don't know. Well, I, I know you know, I Iron Root's not here, but I, I can speak for my understanding of his perspective, and he can correct this if he listens to it. Um, I think Christianity, or really any religion, is too small of a frame for what it is that we're trying to talk about, and it's almost too limiting. Like there is, there is a frame beyond. Yeah. But Iron Root is really into agape. He thinks that that's yeah. one of the deepest levels of truth, if not the mm. deepest level of how to conduct yourself in, in life. Love. Well, see, that's Christianity as an ideology is too narrow. Yeah. And that's, and that's why, to me, it's universal. I mean, it's got to be. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry to no. derail you. No, no, no. This, uh, it's a... Uh... It was me that derailed you, <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, Jeff, we had a, I think we were going to close it out. We ended on how great Paul was. I think you missed that. Yeah, I missed yeah. everything. Well, well, I didn't miss everything. No, I got to hear uh, your entire story yeah. of, of traveling the world. That sounds yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it was... Uh, um, mm. Oh well, my son. It was it was, it was it was great, but it was also like I said, kind of in afterthought. I seen it line a, a bit too much up with like Luke fifteen and the uh, and the prodigal son. <laughs> so yeah, we had to prevent his kids from getting on this video. Yeah, <laughs> I had to move it. I don't. I tell them they were confused. I think because I don't want them on to ever be on the internet yet. Yeah. Really. <laughs> And they're just like, why? You're on the internet all the time. And I'm like, I'm an yeah. adult and I've made that decision. So I think Paul, Paul is right. And I don't know why I don't listen to this um, wisdom. Uh, YouTube is a place for people with nothing to lose. And I, I, don't, I don't take heed of that enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, do you have anything to lose? or? Uh, no, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> a career or friends? I don't know. Like yeah, that's actually a, a problem. But um, uh, but for some, I I totally respect that. But uh, that's why we should have more like uh, and no, that was uh, no. Um, I didn't have a point. I found that. Well, some of it no, some of it's hard because some people do have sometimes people have things to lose professionally which i get mm. if they speak out about what they really think yeah um, some people have things to lose relationally if mm. they speak out with what they really think or if they give certain specifics of their testimony mm. it yeah. could hurt people um sam's a good example of that like there's a lot of people if if i think a lot of sam's conversations even though i think he's being faithful to the tradition he was raised got out there there are people probably in his intimate and personal life that would be troubled or hurt by the things that he's saying you know it's just and that's that's what i think more than anything this community is and this is what i was saying why that verse that you brought up with nathaniel is so great i love it it's mm. just and i was going to say recently i watched but Nathaniel, you know, like here, here is someone without guile. Here is someone in whom there is no deceit. Mm. Somebody who's really saying what they think. And Jordan Peterson, there was a video. This came up recently in my algorithm. Every, every once in a while, his old videos will come up, which this was from his first. It, it's just Jordan Peterson, what is truth? And it's just from his first Jordan Peter or his first Joe Rogan interview. Mm -hmm. and, and the very beginning of the clip, at like the 10 second mark of the clip, I'll send it to you guys. 
he says like telling your truth is the bulwark against hell mm-hmm. and i just like that's that would almost be the most succinct way i would summarize jordan peterson I think what Paul Vanderclay's community is doing, we were talking about that a little, Jeff, when you were gone, I, that, that Paul has created a space for people to be free to say things that they had no other place to say on, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's what I love about this community. I mean, that's what it is for, I mean, that's just the whole, for, just think about that whole phenomenon. Like, pe- this is, it's for people, that, it's a place for people that have nothing to lose why would you ever lose something by saying what you really think? Why have we created a culture mm. where you're going to lose something by, by being honest? That's insane. I don't know. Jacob, but, uh, our, our resident yeah. Jew and I were talking about that the other day on the mm. discord. Well, yeah. And, and I don't in know. Cultures, you know, you, uh, under penalty of death, you can't talk about what you think, right. In some places in the world. That's the that's the most extreme explicit version of it, but we just have a like an unspoken societal shaming version of it, an ostracizing version of it. Yeah. And I think I mean this is a lot of this is what I get into with all my church stuff and my critique. Like I think that's what Protestantism has done is created a culture where you can't say what you really think based on ideology. I don't think that came from the culture apart from Protestantism. I think it actually came out of the religious spirit of the West. But Mm. I've said that a lot Mm. in in other various places. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I I guess this uh, yeah. I don't know um, uh if we should continue like i feel i pretty much got to say what i wanted to say so uh, but, uh yeah <laughs> but um yeah i don't know like um do you have anything you want to add or i i would just say um i'm sorry i wasn't able to be here for yeah. the of it um, no, no. For half of it, however long that was, um, but I look forward to watching it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I think it's a good idea to have like a mediator anyway. Like uh, anyway, if it's going to be a discussion or or, but it was totally fine today too. I think. Yeah. Uh, We've talked about that a lot. Jeff is. Yeah. The, I often tell Jeff that he needs to be my translator or my mediator between me and. <laughs> other parties yeah <laughs> so, all right well thanks it was nice to talk to you martin and yeah you know we'll um do you want to are you want to check it out before we potentially post it or before jeff would uh i can check it out i guess yeah anything too embarrassing yeah i can just run through it really fast to see if i said something stupid yeah, I'll send I'll send you a link to it. You watch it and yeah. give us give us the thumbs up or thumbs down. Yeah. Whether or not yeah. you can put it out there. Yeah. Just like to be safe. I just can have that. Uh, it's a good practice to have anyway. I think. Yeah, for sure. And you don't have to pay attention if Jeff and I said anything stupid. We most <laughs> <surprised> <laughs> yeah, we usually do. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay, but uh, then we are. I'll, I'll see you around. I guess we're good. All right.